Hi, today is the 12th of um, July and our reading today is from Romans chapter 8 verse 31. Just gone into an, another verse. Finally, what, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? I, I, I guess you have already heard of, um, of this amazing verse. If God is for us, who can be against us? It's even, um, it's part of the, of Handel's Messiah. If God is for us, who can be against us? You've, I, I guess you have heard of that, haven't you? So it's, again, we are going to find in, in this new section of chapter 8, um, something that we have been that we have seen before, and I'm just going to remind of, of these things that we've been seen before. In, in, in Romans chapter 6, verse 15, uh, Paul is using the same sort of... Um, of um, he's using the same... Uh, asking the, the same sort of question as he asks in chapter 8, verse 31. He says, What then shall we sin because we are not under the law? But under grace, by no means. So he has been talking, he was talking about grace in chapter uh, 5 and then beginning of chapter 6. And then he's saying, well, shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? So he's going to answer that question. And then we see it again in chapter, the same chapter in verse 1, chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? Is the same thing that he's, he said in verse 15. He actually said um, what is written in verse 6, uh, verse 1, before uh, the verse 15. But they're, um, they're actually the same thing, the same question. And then in chapter 7, verse 7, he says, What shall we say then? Is the law sinful? Certainly not etc. So again he's asking the same sort of question as he, he's asking here in chapter 8 verse 31. So I'm going to read you again verse, uh, chapter 8 verse 31. What then shall we say what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us who can be against us? So what are we, we have to check now is what are these things he's talking about here? And the amazing thing that it's actually surprising to realize that these things are in number of five. We've just seen the last five ones. The last five ones were, uh, he used five verbs in the past and the verbs are four new, uh, predestinate, predestinated, um, called, justified and glorified with just being uh, meditate on them. So there are five. And then before, in verse 28, there were five things as well. And at the end of chapter 8, from the verse 31 to the very end, there's going to be five things again. So it makes me wonder why five? We might be able to talk about it another day. Why five? Five things in chapter in verse 28, five things in verse 29 and 30, and then five things from verse, verse 31 to 39. Isn't that amazing? So what are these five things in verse 28? Because the, the five verses, five verbs, we have just uh, mentioned them. In, they are in verse 29 and 30. So the five things in verse 28 are these. The first thing is that God works. That's the first thing, thing that he says. God works. And then he says that God works for those, for the good of his people. God works for the good of his people. And then he says that God works for the good of his people in all things. God works, he works for the good of his people, he works for the good of his people in all things. And I don't know if you remember, if you have uh, watched uh, that meditation on verse 10, 28, that we said that God works um, in all things, but that doesn't include sin, because 
Paul says in Romans 6, 23, that the wages of sin is death. And it's, God's not going to work with, with sin. But in every situation in your life, God works for your good because you belong to him. So that was the third one. The fourth one is God works for the good of those who love him. God works for the good of those who love him. And then finally, God works for those who he has called according to his purpose. So in verse 20, uh, 28, there are five things that shows us, show us that God works. Isn't that amazing? What is it then? What is Paul talking about here when he says that God works? He's talking about grace. It's not you working, it's God working, working for you. Because it says God is working for the good. We thought that this verse was talking about the things, because some translations will say that all things work. But it's not the things that are working, it's God that's working. Things that don't work, do they for your good? God does. That's what grace is about. So, those five things in 28, and then the other five verbs in verses 29 and 30, they show something very, very, very important to us. And he says that in the verse 31st, when he says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Again, another question. What shall we say in response to th these things? What shall we say about these five verbs that show that God is working for us in His grace? It is God who loved you first. It's God who came and chose you. It was God who revealed himself to you. You were not searching for God. God was looking after you. And God was, God was trying to find you. He knew where you were. But he was trying to show you that he was there. Sometimes he, could, he uses nature. He uses, but he uses the gospel, of course. He uses other people. The life of other people. So what shall we say in all these things? What we shall say, that is, no one, no one can separate from God's love. Because if God is for you, for you, who can be against you?